Double Double Toil and Trouble, short on TP while your guts make bubbles? Or perhaps the people you live with think toilet paper grows on trees? Wait. This week we're going to show you how to instantly double your toilet paper stash from the safety of your own home. To craft the marvelous machine we've dubbed the TP Splitter 1350, you're gonna need a cutting board or some wood, some unsheathed paint rollers like these, and some type of rigid metal spike. Start by positioning the roller at the edge of your cutting board. Once you've got that in place, feel free to snag a length of strong tape and secure the handle right to the board. Using your tape strap, secure the second roller on the other side. Make sure you're maintaining a social distance of at least six inches, six and a half on a good day. For a stronger hold, try some clamps to keep the rollers in place. The only difference is that the rollers will be much closer to the edge. However, they'll last a lot longer than tape. With the rollers now secured, watch in sheer disbelief as they transform into glorious butt paper spindles. Ah. That being said, go grab some empty TP rolls from your local receptacle as we'll be needing some of those in a second. To make a toilet paper mount, just measure the width of the board and find the center. You'll want this to be at least eight inches away from the rollers. You have a couple options here. You could use a long metal screw or just cannibalize a power tool for its handle. We'll show you both ways. Using a drill, bore into the wood at your marked location. You can go all the way through if you'd like, but it really won't be necessary. When you're about halfway through, you can stop drilling and clear away the dust. If you use the right drill bit size, then the screw should go into the hole with relative ease, and it'll be just fine as your TP holder. But it does lack the width to prevent the roll from having a sort of awkward rotation. If you're looking for a much more efficient version, grab something a bit more robust and use that instead. Next, to make the spindles function, you're gonna need a large rubber band. Slide that slinky thing right over the top and down to the base of the rollers. It's okay if the tension pulls things in just a bit, but make sure to flatten that band out so that everything stays consistent. As you give it a test spin, you'll notice that a lot like my neighbors, the rubber band is refusing to shelter in place, and this is unacceptable. To remedy this awkward situation, you know what time it is, get that hot glue out. While slowly spinning the roller, build that wall of glue right above your rubber band's happy home. You may have to go around twice, but when you're done, just reposition your band and drop some globs on the other roller as well. All right, looking pretty good. With our barrier in place, our pulley is now fully functional, and you can be assured the driving belt will stay put. Before pushing the payload, stick some double-sided tape on the outside of those empty rolls that I asked you to get earlier. Tell me you got them. When that's done, slide them onto the spindle for safekeeping. You could also use duct tape by applying a small strip and leaving one side folded out. We don't really recommend this though, as it doesn't stick to the cardboard very well, but sticks to the toilet paper a little too well. This will cause problems later. With everything in place, partially unravel your full roll and cautiously separate the layers of toilet paper just enough to reach both spindles. You're going to carefully attach each one to the double-sided tape that you just added, kind of like this. Make sure that it's on there nice and securely before you continue on with the process. Using a metal spike, specifically a golden one, try and locate where the paper begins to separate from tension. You want this to be as natural as possible, so try out a couple spots before you make a final decision. Otherwise, you'll end up with a bunch of holes like this. Twist that spike into place and give it a little wrap to make sure it's got a good grip to go along with that silky flow. With that done, you can place your rolls back onto the spindles before giving it a test run. Looks great so far, but there is one final piece. That's right, a door hook. How did you know? By sliding the squared end over the spindle's cap and giving it a little bend, it immediately becomes an ideal handle for your TP Separator 5000. Don't have a door hook? What's wrong with you? I guess you can use some vice grips even though they might be too bulky for this particular application. If you don't like the idea of spinning this TP into pure gold by hand, feel free to scare up any spare parts you've got around and use those as a makeshift handle instead. Just slide the widget into your hook and away you go. 
might as well call this thing a cash machine because it looks like we've got a $20 profit here already. In all honesty, the rolls aren't going to come out as tightly as the original, but they are in stellar condition to be used, resold, or hoarded in your tissue collection under your bed. Oh, and the best part about the TP Separator 8467 is that it's so inconspicuous that no one will even notice you bringing it into their bathroom to bum a few squares on the low. It's need before greed, so keep yourself in check. But in the event suspicion is raised, just claim dysentery and re-roll. Some toilet paper. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of Quarantine Quandries. We'll be back at you next week with more interesting and unique items that will help you get through the day. Oh, and if you have some time right now, click that thing on your screen for endless amounts of fun. See you next time.